You're watching Hustler Stories with Ambika Anand. Today we have with us Roshni Vadera. She is an art gallerist. She is the director at Vadera Art Gallery. Roshni, what does the term hustler mean to you? Well, hustling is something that I think we all do every day, uh, especially in the post-pandemic world. You know, the pace of the world is so much faster. There's so many people kind of competing for the same space. Also, in other ways, I'm a working mom. and to balance family life and work life one kind of must hustle to maximize on the 24 hours in a day how would you best describe the art of curation in an art gallery it's quite challenging in today's world to get people to come into the art space especially in the world that we live in which is you know dominated by social media a lot of people feel that if they've seen it on instagram they've seen it in real So the idea is to obviously make the exhibition look perfect and to make the artist happy but also to get the audiences in so how do you draw those kind of crowds in and that's our biggest challenge with every exhibition that we do what is the hardest part about your job and what's the easiest part about your job I think that's so subjective because something that's easy for me may be difficult for someone else. Uh, me and my sister Parul, we run the gallery together, and I think we have the right balance going because there are things that she's amazing at, like the technical aspects of installing an exhibition, which I know nothing about. And then there are other things that I enjoy more. What does a day in your life look like? Uh, well, the day is quite complex because uh, it could have. an artist studio visit something that i enjoy the most because it's where the work starts from from the artist studio it can be a meeting with a collector somebody new is always it's interesting it's challenging to get someone to buy their first work of art and then there are other not so glamorous parts of uh, the job which is the packing and the shipping and the installing and the lighting but it's all exciting for me and i think it's different for every exhibition which is what keeps it interesting your father founded videra art gallery in the year 1987 how was the art world then and how has it changed and how have you at videra adapted to the change I think in 1987 it was more a romantic time there was not much of a market when my father set up the gallery I didn't I don't think that he did it to make it a massive business it was a passion but also at the same time he did have the drive and ambition to build the market and I think he was instrumental in that but he was also very fortunate very lucky to have built solid relationships with what we call the modern masters today so from Hussain to Raza to Ram Kumar to Tayyab Mehta Gaitonde they were all his good friends so your father started the business in 1987 he was into construction and he moved into art uh the two worlds are so far apart how how did his journey happen well i don't think he moved into art because the construction business still continues in fact that's what my brother does but basically he was doing a lot of projects for taj and at that time he got pulled into building the collection for taj and that's when he kind of realized that that's where his heart was how did he know that this is what he wants to do and explore it further when he started it was slightly challenging because he came out of nowhere and he just opened a gallery so everyone was kind of a little suspicious as they are but as i said he built really solid relationships and when you had you know the greats like hussein and raza kind of backing you then who's going to dispute that what you're doing you're doing right he convinced uh the international auction house christies to do their first auction of indian art he uh, convinced a lot of people to buy art he would give promises to buy works back from them which was obviously a bit scary but you know he was someone who was fearless in that way everything was a first everything was new and it was really exciting for him and how was it for you cuz you must be in your teens there well i was 5 when the gallery started hopefully no one is calculating age at this point uh but uh you know hussein was someone who was like a permanent fixture in our life he would kind of you know he was a toofan so he would like storm into uh delhi stay in our house as well he would always be painting he was i think the only artist i know who did not have a permanent studio space because he would make any space into a studio he designed my wedding card which is one of my most prized possessions how was it to enter a family business for you you know it's definitely not something that i thought i would do i i just didn't think it was in me i think joining a family business is different from family to family and if i can say so 
I was in the best sort of position because my father is so liberal and so generous and immediately gave me my own space and encouraged me to open a separate contemporary gallery space. He was happy for me to make my own mistakes and learn along the way. And you know, you could be in someone's shadow and not be able to grow as quickly, but that was never a problem for me. You have these great shoes to fill and you know, you have to be as good, if not better than the generation before you. There were certain spaces where my father had not started participating in like for example, International Art Fairs. In fact, at that time, even when I joined the gallery in 2004, there was no India Art Fair. And now you can't imagine a January or a February in Delhi without an India Art Fair. But at that time, uh, that was something that I said that, you know, I'll do. And I was extremely adventurous and I did art fairs in all sorts of obscure places. In fact, I remember it was when I was in Shanghai for an art fair and the Lehman Brothers thing happened and the market crashed. And the phones stopped ringing everywhere. Like, I mean, you know, nobody would pick up my call anywhere in the world. And at that time, while I was doing these fairs, which are extremely expensive propositions, I wasn't even really doing the math. That is it working out? Am I selling enough to even break even? It's, it's still quite difficult and it's still, uh, it's still a risk. You never really know that you're going to sell enough. The art business is a risky business. At what point did you realize you can crack it? Anyone who's making a home, they think about art. Architects who are building homes, they all have dreams of the, you know, the home being covered in X magazine or Y magazine. It's, you know, everything is about social media. People are sharing their space so much more so people in general are very aware and they do think that art is an in integral part of building a home in a country like India where uh, art is really the last thing on people's mind if you're not thinking of Delhi and Bombay and you know the big cities um, you know the challenge is to really get it to other places and convince people who are still buying jewelry and property and the traditional assets so you spoke about 2008 when people stopped taking your calls. Uh, going back, do you think that's one moment when you wanted to kind of quit and say, I cannot do this? And then what kind of kept you going? Or were there any other moments? So fortunately, I've never wanted to quit. But I think as a woman, you'll also agree with me that financial independence is something that is so important. And, you know, some of us are fortunate enough to have jobs that we love, so work seems like play. And, you know, if there are challenges, there are challenges in everything. If Even if there is a moment that's a struggle, it's something that I'm learning from and I move on from there. For me, the love and joy of doing what I do is that I am actually adding something that you're going to live with, hopefully, for the rest of your life or at least long enough. Which, according to you, is the biggest risk you took in your career? I don't know if there's like one particular one, but you know, there have been several kind of moments where, uh, you know, we've done things that may have seemed a little ahead of our time. Uh, one of them was that we set up a foundation called the Foundation for Indian Contemporary Art in 2007 or 2008. And you know, uh, India is a place where uh, patronage is hard, especially when you ask people for art philanthropy, when there are so many different, more pressing issues like education and health. My friend Radhika and I, we came up with this and we set it up and today we have, I think I'm proud to say, one of the largest patron programs in the country. <laughs> Early on in my career where I showed art that was not necessarily uh, easily absorbed by the market. So I was showing a photographer called Sunil Gupta who was, uh, who was gay, who was HIV positive. A lot of his work was to do with that. Today he's one of the biggest names in international photography. But when I was showing him in the late 2000s, no one would buy. But I liked Sunil. I liked what he was standing for. Uh, his work was interesting and I didn't really care so much on whether it was necessarily being bought by collectors. It was definitely, India was not ready for it at that time. There were things that were being done which were maybe a little ahead but I'm glad that I was in the game before other people. Conventional wisdom tells Indians to become um, an engineer, a doctor for the sake of financial stability. Uh, people are not yet unsure to be career artists. What advice do you have for them? 
I think it's a very tough world, okay, but it's tough all around in the creative business. If you want to be an actor, musician, artist, these are not easy worlds to crack. But I would say that I think that, you know, when you start off uh, being an artist, really talk to the right people, you know, talk to galleries, talk to curators, see what the world is all about. And what is the percentage of a successful artist out of, let's say, every hundred students coming out? I mean, it's probably less than 1% to be honest, but uh, at the same time, you know, India is still, I feel, that there's so much more space for more galleries, more entrepreneurship in everything in the art world. How can art be made more approachable so that and inclusive so that more people can appreciate it? You know, Ambika, that's a question that I actually uh, deal, I mean, I actually ask myself every day. So we try and do as much public programming as possible where we do talks and walkthroughs and workshops where really there is absolutely no uh, uh, kind of agenda to sell but really just for people to come and engage in the contemporary art space because of the lack of museums and because of the lack of even activity in our public museums people just don't have that culture of going into art space just to view it and enjoy it thank you so much roshni thank you ambika